Next up, we have Pat Sertan, the second, the cornerback out of Alabama, who is an interesting guy, right? And first and foremost, as we get into his background, have to bring up why he's Pat Sertan the second, right? It's because his father, Patrick Sertan the first, was actually a Pro Bowl cornerback for the Miami Dolphins, right? So, uh, of course, you know, being a kid who is just around the league growing up, that has its own set of advantages. But I feel like there's an entirely other set of advantages to having a father that played not only the same position as you in the league, but played it to the highest of levels, right? Uh, as I said, a pro bowler in his own right. So Sertan, unlike some of these other guys, has sort of had a guide with him in this whole process, right? That, uh, like I said, has not only done it, but done it at the highest of levels, which uh, certainly has helped him out, right? And that's evident on film as we get into that portion. But uh, first and foremost, I did want to also talk about another advantage that uh, he has and another positive, I guess I should say, just on his resume is uh, the time he spent at Alabama, right? It's very rare, especially this year with all these opt-outs and guys who, you know, had injury problems and all these sort of things. Uh, Sertan has started 38 games at Alabama over these past three years. And when I talk about cornerback in my mind being the most difficult position to just translate right away and produce on the field at the next level, I think having all those game reps against the nation's best wide receivers in college, I think that's going to do wonders for Sertan in terms of uh, potentially speeding up that process as he gets uh, acquainted to the NFL speed of play, right? I think he, uh, compared to at least the other corners in this class, is going to have a uh, potentially easier time than those guys translating right away. Otherwise, talking about the speed of the game, I know uh, some people were concerned about the speed of Sertan, right? And would he be able to hold up uh, against some of these top level NFL receivers. I think he answered those questions at his pro day. Uh, ran a 4 4 2, which at 6 2, 208, uh, as a guy who can do 18 reps on bench, right? Jump 39 inches uh, in terms of his vertical and a 10 foot, 11 inch broad, right? Uh, those are just freaky freaky numbers, right? And in that regard, I think he's not only a guy who has a great athletic profile, a guy who has a great background, who has great experience. Really, at that point, what could go wrong, right? And honestly, as we get into the film grade, you're going to see not very much. I think uh, just a couple areas to talk about in particular, uh, his man coverage ability, first and foremost, as well as sort of uh, complementing that was his just strength and ability to press, right? I feel like in man coverage, you saw first and foremost, those 18 reps on bench, right? In terms of his ability to just go play up on you at the line of scrimmage and misdirect you away from your desired path, right? That was special. But then even after that, as you sort of got into your route stem, he was just incredibly uh, sticky, right? Would do a great job of mirroring and matching guys and uh, constantly anticipating what you were going to run, right? He was very rarely biting on uh, fakes and, and misdirections and whatnot, right? When you're when you're running a post, even if you try and mask it and make it look like a corner, it just felt like Sertan already knew it was a post, right? And in that regard, he was very solid. In terms of his zone coverage ability, I would say he was pretty solid. Um, you know, the one thing that kind of stuck out to me was particularly when he was playing like a deep zone, right? Say a deep third, deep half, deep quarter, etc. It almost seemed like that patience and anticipation that he had in man coverage kind of came back to bite him a little bit here as uh, it felt like he would almost wait a little bit too long before turning and going with some of these guys, right? And when you have so much ground to cover and you're not necessarily some 4-3 athlete, right? Of course, he's still very fast, but um, I don't think that sort of level of speed and recovery speed in particular is there. I think he just needs to be a, a step quicker to sort of turn and go with these guys and make sure nobody gets behind him. Otherwise, uh, I felt like his reactionary quickness occasionally was a little bit questionable. Like I said, the anticipation was great, but... Uh, when he wasn't anticipating what you were going to do and was having to react to it, I felt like there things could sometimes be a little bit questionable. I know one thing I did want to see him do a little bit better job of was when he was manned up on guys playing off them a little bit and they're just running these sort of shallow underneath routes. Uh, once they declare into that slant or into that drag, I wish he would just be a little bit uh, more decisive in terms of attacking downhill and trying to make a play on the ball. Not that I necessarily have a problem with, oh, him letting up a three-yard drag route or a four-yard slant, but it just felt like on some of those plays, if he was just a little bit quicker in terms of uh, reacting to said route, he could have potentially not only broke up the pass, but potentially made a play on the ball and flip the field for Alabama, right? Otherwise, I'll say really solid in run support, which shouldn't, shouldn't be that much of a surprise considering his size and strength combination. Uh, and then you kind of see that size. I gave him a 4.75, doesn't get much better than that. Um, out there on the edges. And then lastly, athleticism, I give him a four. I know uh, there are some questions still about, oh, he didn't run the three cone. He didn't run the shuttle, right? Uh, how is his quickness laterally? I thought he was solid 
um, for the most part. That's why I did deduct him a little bit because occasionally at the top of wide receivers route stems, as I said, when he uh, did sort of guess wrong on their route and didn't anticipate things correctly, uh, he would get a little bit handsy at times that, um, you know, wasn't really getting called much in college, much at all, but I worry that it could at the next level, right? I did also want to mention, I had one other note uh, that I made is that occasionally it felt like he could get his weight outside of his frame and whether that was when he was pressing or uh, at the top of that route stem when he was kind of getting hands on a little bit more than we'd maybe like. I I'm just worried that that could maybe come back to bite him a little bit at the next level. It's nothing severe, obviously, but uh, when, you know, when you're sort of lunging a little bit, when you're going up against Tyree Kill, he's going to sense that and be able to play off of you, right? And, you know, when guys at the next level are just consistently bigger, faster, and stronger than they were in college, that could be a little bit of a concern, but not really to the extent that um, it would dock his grade more than I did here. But overall, total 82 out of 100. I think he's very solid. Put that onto my big board, to which obviously he is the first cornerback I've done. So uh, the position premium, I'll, I'll talk about it here, I guess. Uh, I give cornerbacks 4.5% of their grade reimbursed back into itself, uh, just slightly higher than receivers, right? Receivers, I give four cornerbacks, I give four and a half because I think as a corner, uh, you just have more responsibility, right? Wide receiver, it's run this route and beat that guy. Well, as a corner, you're kind of out in an island, right? And, you know, occasionally people are going to attack your zones with two to three guys, or occasionally uh, you're going to have a one-on-one -on -one matchup with a wide receiver deep. If that wide receiver doesn't catch the ball, it's just another down. If you don't make that play, it could potentially be a touchdown, right? So I just value corners slightly higher. Overall, that 85.69 does have him as my number two uh, defensive player to this point, right behind Micah Parsons there at an 86.68. I'll say uh, in terms of on draft night, if I was a team selecting, I didn't take Parsons' potential character concerns into his grade. I don't have access to those interviews. I don't have a legal team that could potentially, you know, get on the case and find out, oh, was he hazing this guy? Was there sexual harassment involved, et cetera, et cetera, right? I don't know any of that stuff. So for me, uh, when it comes just down to more so of a film and athletic-based evaluation, I would say he's just below, right? But I still think he's very solid. I still very well think he could be the first defensive player off the board, and that wouldn't surprise me or really bother me at all, right? It just means that those teams who potentially had answers to the Parson questions, um, they they weren't good ones, right? And that's sort of the problem there. So I think obviously with Sertan being my first overall cornerback, there's not as much to talk about here. Uh, if you want to hear me compare him to a Caleb Farley, a JC Horn, uh, Sante Samuel, guys like that that are coming in future videos, uh, make sure to click that subscribe button, right? Otherwise, make sure if you enjoyed this video to leave a like. And lastly, leave a comment, right? Obviously, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on Pat Sertan. Um, do you think he's the best corner in the draft? Do you think he's the best defensive player in the draft? And uh, otherwise, how would you compare him to some of the CBs in recent memory? I know some people say he's the biggest can't miss prospect since Jalen Ramsey, which uh, I find a little bit interesting because people just said that about Jeff Okuda uh, 365 days ago, no less. But um, now that Okuda's fizzled out, I guess that sort of hype is gone. Uh, until he potentially turns around in Detroit, people are going to forget about him. But otherwise, I think Sertan is certainly in that discussion. I wouldn't have him on the caliber of Ramsey. If I did, he would probably be uh, right up there towards Kyle Pitts in all honesty. But I still think he was solid nonetheless. I would feel pretty comfortable taking him uh, right around that top 10 pick, right? And it could potentially be even higher depending on how I grade some of these QBs coming up as well. But with that being said, that is all I really have for you guys today. Hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully I'll see you in the next one, right? I'm mic'd up, now I'm mic'ing out. Peace, guys.